Hi, it's Sandra with the Louisiana Cajun Mansion Bed and Breakfast. And today I'm going to be showing you how to make authentic, real Cajun rice and gravy. You know, rice and gravy isn't served, uh, it commonly served in restaurants, and it's a staple down here. Everybody, whether you're rich or poor, eats rice and gravy. Um, it's a common dish, and uh, the dish is either made with pork or beef or chicken. When it's made with chicken, we call that sticky chicken because it gets all sticky and stuff. But there are secrets to making a good rice and gravy. So if you're a Cajun out there and you often wonder, man, my rice and gravy isn't as good as mom's or grandma's, but you do, but you're adding all the same things that they do, you're just not cooking it right. And in this video, by the time we're done, you're gonna know how to make a beautiful rice and gravy. There are four secrets to making a good, authentic Cajun rice and gravy. Uh, the first thing is you wanna take your time when you're browning the meat. You want uh, your temperature to be on a medium high. If it's too high, it's gonna burn, so your gravy won't be good. But if you uh, do it at right the right temperature, and I show you how to do it, um, then you will have enough of that gradu at the bottom of your pot to make sure that you have that nice brown uh, look that you need. The other thing is you want to be able to saute your Holy Trinity right. You want to baby that Holy Trinity. And if you don't take your time doing it, you're missing the boat. You want to cook that Holy Trinity for about 45 minutes. I'm going to show you what it looks like at the beginning and then what it looks like at the end so that you know that you're stretching that and you're not rushing uh, cooking your Holy Trinity down. And uh, then the third thing is you want to cook your meat until it's very tender. Uh, the bigger the roast, the, the longer that you have to cook it. And you just cook it until you can put a real big uh, fork into it and it's just extremely tender. And then the fourth thing is when you cut your meat, you wanna cut it against the grain. Um, most rice and gravies are done with roast, but not always. You may have uh, like a steak, a round steak, which you need to cook longer or depending on the meat, depends on how long you have to cook it. And there's also something else that's very, very important. Cajuns don't ever use kitchen bouquet to make their gravies nice and brown. And they don't use flour either to uh, thicken their gravies. You do it by cooking your Holy Trinity right and also browning your meat properly. And then the last secret that I have is you always want to either use a Magnolite pot or one of those real heavy iron pots. Uh, when you use aluminum pots or any other kind of pot, you're not going to get your gravy like you want it. So trust me, you can test it out if you want to, because I did. And um, it's the only thing that Cajuns usually use to, uh, to do their dishes. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how to make this, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, the first step when making a rice and gravy with a roast is you have to stuff the roast. Uh, we never, Cajuns never uh, cook a roast without stuffing it first. So the very first thing we start with is the Holy Trinity, uh, and that is uh, your onions and your bell peppers and your celery. And I always add a uh, heaping teaspoon of garlic, as you can see right here. The next thing is, my preference is using Benoit's seasoning. Uh, it's salt free and my, my reasoning for using Benoit's is it has a whole bunch of herbs in it instead of just pepper and uh, so as you, you can see here I'm adding a pretty good bit. This is what we're going to use to stuff the roast and then I also use uh, Redmond Real Salt. It's a sea salt. I use that to help from swelling and you go ahead and add oops your salt okay so here we go then we can take this and of course you make sure that your hands are nice and clean uh, wash them before and you want to thoroughly take this seasoning and blend everything that I have here all together and I'll show you the next step in just a minute 
Okay, so our next step is stuffing a roast. As you can see here, I've totally uh, taken the roast and I've seasoned it with the uh, Benoit seasoning that I showed earlier and also with the Redmond salt. It's a sea salt that we use um, and I feel that it helps out with uh, swelling and you can control your uh, salt uh, in your seasoning by using um, a seasoning that doesn't have salt in it. Now, Cajuns d usually don't cook a roast without stuffing it. Um, the roast that I'm using here today is a beef roast and I've chosen to use uh, a chuck, a center cut chuck steak. You can use a rump roast uh, or um, uh, basically a rump roast uh, for beef or a, um, a chuck's beef steak is the better way to go. This is very tender. It'll cook a lot quicker than the rump roast. But what you want to do is you're going to want to like cut a hole in it like this. Okay, so you can see there's a hole here and then you grab some of this mixture that's already seasoned. The onion mixture is totally seasoned and you just, and you push it in there. Push it in and then you make another diagonal here, make another hole here and as you can see and then you just push that in with your thumb. Just get it in. Now, you're not going to put all of the seasoning that's in this, um, that, that's in the bowl right here in the steak, or I'm sorry, or in the roast, because you're going to use that to make your gravy. Um, the Holy Trinity you see here is uh, what's going to make a nice, beautiful, thick gravy. And you just continue doing this. Uh, I'm going to probably make like maybe five holes in here like this, and it's just to get the seasonings uh, and the flavor just into your roast. And I like doing it diagonal. My knife doesn't go all the way to the bottom this way, and you, you're able to get more of your, uh, uh, your seasoning mixes. So let's see here, I have four holes. I think this is good, so I'm gonna stay with that. So now you know how to stuff a roast. Okay, so the next step in making a rice and gravy is taking the stuffed roast that you already have and putting it in a Dutch oven with about that has about a quarter of an inch of uh, olive oil or uh, vegetable oil in it. And if you notice it's sizzling down here, you want it to sizzle. So we're going to let this cook down for a few minutes and I'll come back and show you how we're going to burn. Okay, the meat has been cooking for about and sizzling for about uh, a minute now. I have it uh, pretty high, but not totally on high. And uh, as you see here, it's beginning to brown at the bottom here. So now I'm going to turn the roast over and let it brown the other side. But the bottom of the pot needs to be dark, dark, dark brown here. So it's just beginning to brown and, and we need to brown as you can see the sides of the gravy, I mean the sides of the roast. So we'll come back and uh, when I have it browned this the way that I need it to be browned, I'll show you what it looks okay, like. Okay, the roast has been frying down for, oh, I guess maybe 15 minutes now. Uh, it was on high, but then I lowered it down to, uh, you know, medium high. And I'm going to pick this up so you can see the bottom of the pot looks really dark and brown, but yet it's not black. If you have your fire too high, it's going to turn black, and black is not good. So this is the perfect setting to start your nice brown gravy. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to add all of these onions. Remember I had this in, this, um, in the pan there? And we're going to take these onions and just spread it around the roast here because what we're wanting to do is we're wanting these onions to um, cook down to a puree. And this is the Holy Trinity. It's not just onions. And then the other thing that I do just to add a little bit of pain to it, you don't have to do this. Um, I just enjoy doing it. Um, is I add uh, a little bit of diced tomatoes with green chili in it. It's not going to make a tomato sauce, 
it'll just add a little bit of twang. You don't have to add this. This is just something that I enjoy doing. And I'll probably add about a half of a, of a can, and I don't include the, the moisture in it. Okay, and then I just take this and just roll a little around. And if you notice at the bottom here, some of this gravy down here is beginning to just come and get unstuck. It's not sticking like it was doing. The onion uh, adds moisture to it. Now, I am going to take the, the roast and the onions right now. Now that I have taken it and swooshed it all over in the pot, I'm going to cover it. And the purpose for covering it is to make all of the uh, moisture that is in the Holy Trinity, it's going to come out of the vegetables. And um, it'll start forming a little gravy down there. The, um, all of the, the brown gradu that we call down there will start unsticking from the pot. And I'll take the cover off probably in about 10 minutes. And again, I still have the stove on a medium high. Remember, we want the, go the next goal is to puree those onions. And you want to baby those onions. You want to cook that for at least 45 minutes. If you don't do that, you've messed your gravy up. So I'll get back to you in okay, just a minute. Okay, I uncovered the pot here. And uh, look at here. You see how all the gravy is just uh, unsticking from in the bottom of the pot? Um, the onions need to cook down for at least another 30 minutes because um, it's not even nearly cooked down enough okay and so all of this gradu from the bottom of the pot is coming up at some point um, it'll run out of the moisture and it's okay to put a little tiny bit of water in here if you need it but I just let this gravy go on and then I put the roast back right on top of it while it's cooking Okay, I'm still cooking my Holy Trinity now, down and making my gravy, and look at this. Look at how awesome this is looking. And remember, Cajuns never, ever, ever use kitchen bouquet to make their gravies dark, and they never have to use flour. We do it with our Holy Trinity. And so at this point, you can see, um, this has probably been, cook been cooking for at least a half hour. We're going to go some more because I want those onions to really be pureed. And uh, it's beginning to kind of stick down here. So I have uh, one of these spoons with um, that, that has a straight edge to help scrape this down. And then I'm going to add right here just a little bit of water. That helps take the uh, gradu off the bottom of this pot right here so just kind of I'm at I just added a little tiny bit of water it's not a lot of water see it's not a lot and that way it'll um, it'll just help steam everything in the pot I'm gonna cover it again so that it can cook down I still have my fire on um, at about nine so it's a medium high okay so now we're down to actually getting the roast uh, where the roast is going to be tender. Our gravy has been cooking down here for uh, 45 minutes. Look how beautiful and brown it is. Once we're going to add some water, it'll be a little bit more transparent. And uh, so this roast needs to be where it's just about falling apart once we're going to cut it. So I'm going to add some water. I have a, a glass that's about like this. And so I am just turning this, here we go here, just adding all this water here. And you can totally see how much water I have in here. See? And you can even add a little bit more if you want to, but I'm not. Right now I am just going to go ahead and cover this pot again. and. Uh, let it cook. So the roast is probably going to cook a minimum of an hour because you know it's um, the roast isn't very thick. 
If you have a thicker roast, of course, you're going to cook it a lot longer. And then when it's done, you're going to cut it with a um, uh, an electric knife, and you're going to cut it against the grain. But I'll show you guys how to do that. For right now, this is going to continue cooking. Um, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to push, put this to almost on a medium far. I'm going to take the cover that I have here and cover the pot and let it do its thing for at least another hour, uh, maybe even an hour and a half, depending on how tender it is. But I'll come back and show you how to get it cut when we're done with this. Okay, I've turned the fire off. I've taken the roast out and uh, sliced it up uh, against the grain. As you can tell, here, here's the roast. Here's the gravy, how absolutely beautiful it is. Oh my stars, this is like so good. And this is Cajun rice and gravy. By now, whether you're Cajun or not, you should be able to make a real authentic Cajun rice and gravy because I've given you all of the details. Also, if you click on that link below here, you'll be able to get all of the instructions that are written out to a T with exactly what the measurements are. So see you later and let us know how your rice and gravy came out.